Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are going to be talking about yet another Repotme product and these are the slotted pots. You've seen me use them in the previous videos. I even told you that I would do a review on them in the community section. So today I'm actually repotting the Fragmipediums and since I've already filmed that video, I think it's a good time to film the video with these pots as well because I will be using them. Might as well use them on camera and tell you my thoughts on them. So, let's go back in history a little bit. Do you remember my balcony days? I'm sure most of you don't remember because you were not subscribed to me back then. Well, back in the day, what I used to do is make these types of pots myself. I would save all of the transparent pots that would come with orchids and I would put extra ventilation holes on the sides. And do you remember how I used to do those holes? I used to make sort of vertical lines but poked holes. I used to use a heated nail but then I switched to a soldering iron which was cheap and I wasn't going to be using with anything else. And pretty much for three years or so in my balcony days these were the pots that I was making myself because I could not find on the market pots with slits. I had issues finding transparent uh, plastic pots as it were, let alone with ventilation holes with slits and so on. And throughout the years many of you asked me where do I get my pots and well sources are varied because up until now these types of pots were not really available, to me at least. I know that in the USA Repotme has been selling them for a while but I'm in Europe I did not really have access to all of the things you guys have in the USA and I'm sure like me there were many of you who had to DIY these pots so definitely you can go the route of DIY pots however it is nice sometimes to just get something pre-made and well if you take a close look we are talking about pots with ventilation slits here which are pretty good looking I have to say and it just occurred to me that Jessica sent me these orchids in repot me pots I looked at the bottom they're the same pots so I can actually show you how orchids will perform in the future in these pots which is pretty great now first of all of course let's take a look on the product page see what they say about these pots maybe there's something we can learn so on the website we see they're available in 11 vibrant colors plus clear that's actually pretty neat I'm gonna show you a few colors for those of you who do appreciate a little color side and bottom slots increase drainage and aeration around the roots yes reason why I was poking the holes and I can tell you it does make such such a difference particularly with layering if you're growing in bark medium the ventilation holes slash slits uh, they do help a lot with layering perfect for all orchids houseplants and African violets not sure about that but I can tell you that what I used to do my DIY pots worked really well with African violets I had so many pots at some point that my mom used to steal them and use them with the African violets problem was I needed to make sure that I didn't make too much big holes because the medium would just run out of the holes these are slits though or slots um, so maybe you won't have this issue with these pots I can tell you the African violets did work pretty well in these pots but the medium sometimes would just come out of the holes and if you look on the website you will see the dimensions that are available quite a lot of them and other fun interesting things about the pots one thing I would like to point out, which I'm pretty sure it's not a feature on most typical orchid pots you find with the Phalaenopsis you buy and other sources, UV protection built into the strong plastic. Now that's good because with sun, the plastic will become very, very brittle. If you've ever had Cambria orchids here in Europe, that grayish whitish pot, sometimes when you try to squeeze it and get the orchid out, it just crumbles. That's a pot that you cannot really use anymore. It's spent its life because it has been exposed to sun, it became brittle. So apparently these will not go brittle on you because they have this UV protection and theoretically they at least should last you longer than other pots. So that's good, I wanted to point that out because I know there are people who ask me about the UV thing with the masks that I use in my self-watering pots. Some of them have UV protection, it specifies it on the label, some of them don't. But then again, I don't keep all of my orchids in sun. I try to put the best quality pots with my cat layers outside. So with that said, I'll add the links to the products and repot me down below. They're not affiliate links, but as you know, I am partnered with repot me. And even though this is not a sponsored video, these pots have been sent to me by repot me for reviewing, for using. 
and uh, see what I think about them, just like the medium that I will be using today. So first of all, let's just take a look at some orchids which have been growing in these pots. One of the things that happened a lot with my DIY pots were the roots coming out of the holes, of the aeration holes. And this happened a lot because, as I was saying, the holes that I was poking were quite big, bigger than these slits. As you can see, this can still happen. But if I were to make an average, I think it's not as much as in my DIY pots. You'll see the other pot has no root coming out. But usually roots are just so incredibly flexible. They can squeeze through the tiniest of slit and go through the medium. If they cannot find space, they will just become very thin and they will grow. So even though the slits are tinier than the holes that I used to make, the roots will eventually come out of the slits. It's just something where kids do and I don't think you can ever have something which will completely prevent the roots coming out of the pots. Maybe something like mosquito nets will help, but with fine rooted orchids, that won't help either. On the bottom, again, you can have roots coming out, but you can see this one doesn't have any root coming out of the bottom, which is great. And with this orchid, actually there is no root coming out of the slits. Maybe this is just lucky, but at the bottom you can see there are roots coming out. So I would not expect this pot to completely eliminate this issue if you consider it an issue, but I do think the ratio of roots poking out is a little tinier than I used to have. Anyway, this is something that I don't typically mind. If I repot Phalaenopsis orchids, it's okay if a few roots are lost. Phalaenopsis are vigorous plants. They don't don't really care if a few roots are damaged. Also with other orchids that might care, when it's time to repot, usually you already have a lot of roots. So for me, this is a non-issue, but if for you it is an issue, definitely roots can come out of the slits. Don't think that the size of the slits will prevent it from happening. Other than that, you can see the orchids grew very, very well. And this is because the whole purpose of the ventilation slits or holes is to provide more aeration. And particularly if you're using very water retentive media such as sphagnum moss or even something inorganic such as rock wool cubes. Spoiler, we're gonna be testing that real soon because I ordered it. So even with something like that, these slots are really, really useful. They don't have to do with organic media media or anything, they just have to do with the quantity of water and the level of aeration in the pot. And any medium benefits from aeration, any orchid benefits from aeration, unless the medium you're using is just so chunky that it retains very big air pockets case in which the slits might not be for you. So now that we have actually seen some orchids in these pots, let's take a look at the pots. Repotme has sent me a few color variations here. I have the purple, blue, green and the transparent pots here. And here's what the website was saying about the bottom slits. Do you see the sheer number of slits? on the bottom. There is absolutely no way that water can get trapped. You also have the cone. It's a little cone, it's not very high, which can be a good thing because you have more space for roots and medium. But of course, if you have a very, very humid environment, you might want to use more airy medium with something like this because the cone, you see, it doesn't protrude all that much. So we sacrifice a little bit of extra ventilation with a deeper cone, but we get more room in the pot. So you do need to take it into account. We see that the material is polypropylene, which is considered to be a non-toxic plastic and it can be used with edible plants as well, as far as I know at the moment. And also you see the Repot Me logo. And I think this is the smallest size they have. You could fit in here a mini Phalaenopsis, which doesn't have too many roots. I would actually go one size larger. I would put a mini Phalaenopsis in this and something smaller than that in this. One thing that I wish I would have is the size on the pots because now I need to look on the website. I can tell you this is an 8 centimeter or very similar to it, but when it comes to inches, I'm lost. Alrighty then, so apparently this is 3 inches, then the next one up is a 4 inch pot, then we have I guess the standard 5 inch and the biggest one which apparently is a new addition. This is the 6 inch pot, I would say it is the equivalent of a 15 centimeter pot. So I will put the sizes on the screen right now in inch and the equivalent in centimeters just so you have a better idea. They are pretty standard sizes 
and so far these are the sizes in which you can find these pots and as far as colors go well you can just see what colors are available I have to say I really like the purple one because I like purple what to do and even though they are colored you can still see the roots through them but if you want perfect clarity I would go for the transparent or translucent actually pot so with that said I think it's time to actually go and repot at least a few orchids in these pots and I will reiterate some things that I've already said in previous videos just to have everything in one video all right so the first orchid we're gonna repot is the Phragmipedium I've already removed the dead roots cleaned up the root system we're all done I will be using the slipper orchids imperial orchid mix from repot me we talked about this in a previous video depending when I'm gonna upload this if you missed it and you're interested I'll link you down below to it in real life I actually just filmed that video and I do want to use this medium a little bit more today so I chose the six inch pots and yet again I forget about the napkin okay the napkin will catch all of the medium that falls around one thing I wanted to point out being that we don't have big holes at the bottom you will have a little bit of fallout yes but not a whole lot typically through normal pot drainage holes that you usually have in these pots you'll have things like these falling through even leka sometimes which can be rather frustrating until you find the perfect balance and especially when you work with leka you can actually have drainage holes which are completely jammed with the leka and nothing actually drains anymore so with the slits yeah you have a little bit of fallout but only the very 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 tiny pieces the bigger pieces will not fall out this is something that I actually do appreciate with these pots so I'm gonna place a layer of medium at the bottom like usual and then I will place my orchid inside typically Phragmipediums are grown in taller pots sadly I do not have any of those pots but this will do one thing to make sure with these orchids as well as with other terrestrial orchids make sure the roots do not come out of the drainage holes as they grow they will not come out of the slits if you don't have a mask or a decorative container to maintain that humidity when they find air they either avoid it either stop growing and branch out you can actually air prune the roots of these terrestrial orchids but if you do have a mask and humidity is high the roots will come out of the pot and they will go on the bottom where they will enjoy the moisture and everything will be okay I've actually never had issues with my Paphiopetalums uh, but yeah generally Paphiopetalums and Phragmipediums are not potted in slotted pots things with aeration holes and so on however they don't mind it and particularly if you have a humid environment or you're just afraid that the orchid will be a little bit too suffocated by the medium you can definitely go for the ventilation holes all of my life my paths were in pots with ventilation holes and it was okay there was no drama and here we have them I repotted the other Phragmipedium as well they look already a little bit happier than they used to right um, I have to say I do like the purple pot if you are to keep your orchids without a mask or a decorative container and you want to have a little bit of color oh just look at that purple I don't know I like purple you might be different than me so I think it will be interesting to see them perform and see how much algae accumulates in the colored pots maybe this coloration which does give it a slight translucent uh, vibe maybe they can help with algae as well we'll see this will be a test so I will keep them like this no decorative container needed I do want to repot another orchid though in a smaller pot and this is the sarcochylus that I just purchased because this medium just said the magic word for me sarcochylus I've been looking for a medium for a while a suited medium so for this one we are going to be using not the smallest pot the next one I'm going to be adding a layer on the bottom then place the orchid inside and just add medium around it and here we have them as some final ideas you can see here that these pots have a little bit of a lip so if you'd like to make self-watering pots out of them and you have a mask that can make a perfect fit then you can definitely use them for self-watering as well you can find a wick that can go through the slits um, so that works and something that I really liked with plastic pots a while back you remember I kept my orchids well some of them hanging I had those plastic hooks I could only hang the pots which had a lip 
lip and these particular ones do have a little bit of a lip as well this can work depending on the hanger as well if you just want to keep them hanging for whatever reason so they do have just a little bit of a lip here that can work and I think that concludes the review. Can you do without these pots? Absolutely, you can DIY uh, plastic pots. Can you use one-time use cups that are transparent? Yet again, absolutely, you can use anything that you can transform into an orchid pot. Is it more comfortable to use these? Yes. Do they have benefits? Yes. The UV protection thing is quite important on the long run if you know you're going to be using orchids in the sun. So overall, just like with anything, they are actually designed for orchids and I really do like them. I like the vertical slit rather than the uh, ventilation holes that I used to poke because the medium stays inside more. I do also like the fact that they don't have drainage holes, but then again, slits because you're not gonna lose medium. So overall, uh, there's no reason not to like them. I do like them. I like this particular color because I like purple. So there you have it. If you were wondering, it is a really nice pot, really kind of sturdy. It's not a flimsy pot, but it's certainly not very rigid either. So if you were in the market for some already pre-made orchid pots, definitely check the description down below for the link to repot me. They do deliver internationally, but the shipping can be very costly depending on your territory. Hopefully that will be fixed in the near future, but we'll see what happens. No spoilers. So you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video, just turn on notifications to my channel. If you're interested in my other setup and other things that I use on a regular basis, just expand the description. I have everything listed there. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.